All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a fluid slider, and it's gonna look just like this. So this is the sample app, and when you click on it, you'll see this very nice animation that looks like a drop, and you can drag it to the side, and it will change the value of whatever you want to change. You can also just click on any point you want, and it will pop up there. But uh, it's just a very nice slider, has a very nice UI animation, so let's go ahead and make that. So the first thing we want to do is go to our Gradle scripts and open on build.gradle and go all the way down to the dependency section because we will be using this Ram Motion Fluid Slider Android dependency. And I'll leave that in the description below. So you can just go down there and copy it. And right under installation, we'll go ahead and copy this implementation 0.3.1 and we will drag it or just copy it and paste it inside here. Now we can go ahead and click on sync now. And as soon as the project is done syncing, we can close the Gradle scripts and go to our res folder and open the layout folder, click on activity underscore main XML and click on the split view. The first thing we want to do in here is change it to a relative layout. And we want to get rid of these app attributes and just type in center in parent and set that to true. Then we'll give this text view an ID of TV underscore text. The text color will be set to text color black. The text size will be set to 30 SP, so it's nice and large. And finally, we just have to set this text over here to value. Then right above it, we can go ahead and open a angle bracket and type in RAM motion. And we'll get this fluid slider, which should initially match the parent for the width and wrap the content for the height. It will have an ID of fluid underscore slider. And we will align this to the parent bottom and set that to true. And you can actually put this wherever you want since it is a slider, but I prefer to have it at the bottom because it looks really good there. And we can give it a different color. Let's say we want to, we'll just set it to white for now and then click on this small box here so we can pick it and we'll make it blue this time. And we can also set the duration of the animation, which I found the best at 500 milliseconds. Set the end text to whatever you want. You can say max. And we also can set the initial position to let's say this time 0.2 or 0.3 this time. You can also indicate a size, which I'm going to set to normal. And finally, let's set a start text, which can be min if you want. And then we need to close that. And in case you're curious about what other things you can customize, of course, you can open the dependency. And at the bottom, you'll see there are a bunch of attributes that you can change. But for a basic slider, I think this is perfectly fine. Then we have to go to our main activity Kotlin file. And the first thing I'm going to insert is the app compat delegate to make sure our phone stays in light mode. And then right under that, we're gonna create a method called setup slider. Now we can go ahead and create this private function, set up slider. And the first thing we have to do is refer to our slider, which is going to equal find view by ID. And this is going to be of type fluid slider, r.id.fluid underscore slider. And then also create another value for the text view, which is going to be find view by ID, text view, and then r.id text. Then to make the text view react to the slider, we have to type in slider.position listener and that's going to create a lambda expression which we can just write position and it's going to return the text dot text which is going to equal the position times 100 because right now we are in a decimal and it's going to return that to a string so this gets the current position of the slider and this just multiplies it by 100 and converts it to a string so the text view will display a whole number and if you want to get the position of the slider at any given moment all you have to do is call slider.position and that will get the current position of the slider but uh, you should call that at the point that you want to retrieve the position of course and then there are two more methods i want to show you so you can actually do everything with the slider and the second one is a begin tracking listener which will be triggered as soon as you start tracking so if we create a toast here we take application context as the context, we can just write started tracking. And there's a very similar method for ending the tracking listener. So when you stop tracking, it will trigger this method. And we can just go ahead and copy the toast from above and paste it down here and just type in ended tracking. And those are the very basics you need to know about this slider to make it function smoothly. So let's go ahead and test it by clicking on run. So as you can see, when the application starts, we start at the initial position of 30. And when you drag it, it will say start tracking. It will have this beautiful drop animation. And when you stop dragging it, it will say end tracking tracking because I made a typo here apparently. But otherwise it works smoothly and it looks really good. So you can use this essentially in any application you want. 
But uh, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.